Hello everybody and welcome back to Chosen Farm. Hopefully you're doing very well today. It is, well I was going to say beautiful weather, it's okay. Uh, it's now mid-spring which means we have grass growing and we have the crops growing in the fields as well. Uh, this isn't my field but yeah as you can see it's growing. Is that cotton? I think it might be. Anyway, what we're going to be doing, it, well later on in the video we're going to be uh, looking after the cows because they do need more food but we're going to be focusing on the field work mostly today. Um, because, yeah, we want to make sure everything is as... Why did I close the gate? We want to be making sure everything is productive as possible uh, so that we get the most yield out of our crops. So, yeah, let's just refill this. We have a small area of fill number 118 to finish off. If you watched the previous episode, you will know that I went around the headland of this field here. And actually, this should be apparent on this map. Yeah, so you can see... The nitrogen has been applied, the yellow section. Uh, the orange section is because we've been scanning it. So we need to get that finished. It's probably going to be more than one load, but because we have now rested, they have the cows have now produced more slurry. So, yeah, we have enough for two or three tanker loads, which is enough. So, yeah, we'll go over to 118. We'll get the first tanker load put onto the field. And then I think we're going to be looking into getting a new field for the spring. Since we have 526,000 pounds and although yeah we do need some of that to expand the livestock farm and the uh, the equipment for the livestock farm, we can still afford to buy some more arable fields. And I can't wait to cut the clover. I've never actually mowed clover before. I'm guessing it's exactly the same as mowing grass but or alfalfa, but it is still going to be interesting to do. In fact, because the clover is so similar to grass, I wonder if it's almost ready to cut. It's gone to this page here. It's number three. Okay. Yeah, I think it probably does go to ready to harvest. I think. Um, so it's not quite there yet, but it doesn't mean that we can't cut it if we don't want to. Well, certainly with grass, you can cut it whenever, pretty much. Here we are, and yeah, we've been playing with only three days per season, and it's been going okay. Before this, I was running six days per season. Mm, I can't see where I've been, that's the only issue. Um, so yeah, I don't know if we should go back to six. Three is really okay. Yeah, I didn't realise, because the crop host did that thing again. Just a random freeze. That should be working again, good. Oh yes, it'll probably just stop applying it when we go over an area which has been done. Although, because the crop has now grown a bit, it probably all wants to be covered with another application by well, the, the first headland. So we'll just do the whole third if it's possible. Which does mean it's going to be a case of, I think, pretty much using up all of our slurry, but that's fine. It's free. Let me just try and go right to the edge. If it allows us to go to the edge, it means we can put a second application on. Yeah, okay. So that makes perfect sense because uh, it has now grown a bit. So we'll stick with what I said. We'll just do the whole field or until we run out of slurry. Right, so this is our final load. It wasn't a full load as predicted. Um, I'm just going to keep going until it runs out. But this area, as you know, already did have the uh, the initial application. So there we go. 
what does it look like? There will be a few missed areas because I was trying to cover it in the best way possible. Okay, so it's definitely obvious where we've done application number two. We could go over it again, well, in the next day when it grows again with a sprayer. But yeah, that's, that's good enough for now. Let's take this back to the farm and then we can decide what to do with the new field. Whichever field it is, I don't know yet. Uh, we also did buy the other arable field. I need to get the sprayer out and spray that. That should be the only application that field needs this year. But I do like it down here. It's a nice area next to the river. That's the field that needs to be sprayed. I can't remember which crop it had been planted with. Ah, uh, yes, I think it was barley. Yeah, barley. So, um, of course, we also bought field number 116, which is a canola field. That is probably going to have to be fertilised as well. It is. And analysed, of course. Both these fields need analysing. Which means, because we can't put the analyzer on the sprayer, we need to analyze it first. Which gives me an idea. Because the crop has already started to grow, and it's actually growing very nicely, we don't really want to be just driving a tractor randomly through it everywhere. So maybe a quad bike. Now, I know this could bring up an issue, and I know the quad bike is designed to be used with the other soil sampler, not this, not the sensor here. Um, we'll try it though, because I know this is supposed to be on the front of a tractor, and even put it on the back of the tractor does cause issues. So, yeah, if the quad bike isn't compatible with the sensor, which I'm not expecting it to be, then what we'll do is we'll get the other one, and we'll actually send some uh, soil samples off to the lab. Quite interesting. But yeah, I've always wanted a quad bike. Now I know for some people who say, oh, that's just a waste of time and money. You have the tractor, let's just go. <laughs> I just like to use different machines, you know, doing different stuff. I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. It's not always about the speed that something can be done at. At least that's not the approach I take. I prefer to make it more interesting and uh, I like to add variety. And a bit of trial and error. There's nothing wrong with trying stuff. Okay, I will see you when I've installed the mod. So, here it is. I think we can customize many things about it, so let's take a look. First of all, the wheel setup. We have a selection of wheels and also the wheel brand. All of which actually look quite good. I do quite like, I think the Nokian tires on that look really good. Yeah. I think I do. I prefer that. Um, so let's go for that configuration. Yeah, we're buying a new. Right, handlebar, one, two. So it looks like it's changing the display just here. I think I prefer that. Number two. As for the design, oh, a bumper. Oh, crikey, a little roof thing. Um, I think we'll just go with the bumper. Yeah, that one there. Now for the attachers. Rear hitch. Side hitch. That's interesting. Standard. Yeah, so we're going to go for rear hitch. And then we've got the colour. Red is always quite a good one to go for. JCB looks quite good. Ooh, look at that. Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. It always is. Ruby red, race red. Okay, I'm just gonna have to choose something. I think I will, I'm gonna go for JCB. It just looks a bit different. And the rim color, I'm fine with the standard, so 12,700 pounds. As I said, I don't, well, I, I don't know, but I, I wouldn't have thought this is gonna work with the scanner, the sensor, because um, I think it is all set up for the soil sampler. So if it doesn't work with it, which as I keep saying, it probably won't, we will just jump cut and then we'll have the uh, the sampler ready to go. It's quite a speedy thing. We can do 75 miles per hour on this. Look at it go. 
Yes, I, I, I like that dashboard. It looks much better than the uh, the first one, although I didn't see it from first person view. It just This one looks more streamlined. Very nice. Really good. I, I think the yellow looks good. The red would have looked good too. The red might have looked better. It's also surprising how just the colour of something, like a car, just the colour can make you like a vehicle more. You've got to get the right colour. Although, of course, yes, that's not really what it's about, especially for a tractor. You want something to be reliable. You want parts, of good parts availability, good customer service from the dealer. It's not all about the colour. Oh, that is fast. My face is falling off. Okay, so, as suspected, yeah, we're going to have to go for the source sampler. Ready? Designed for a tractor. Now we're ready to go. Brilliant. And we will be keeping the soil sampler. We'll still need it for other fields. Grass fields are fine because we can just use the sensor as we go. And in fact, any time we're using a fertilizer spreader, it's fine as well. It's only because we're using the sprayer, and I don't think it's possible to put the sensor on the sprayer. Although, really, you should be able to. <laughs> It's just, yeah, I don't think there's a mod for it. I might be wrong. If there is, that would be amazing. So we should now be able to take a sample. Should see it fill the pot. Have to see through the crop. There it goes. First sample taken. That should be showing up on our map. Just down here. There we go. Sample taken. So we need to take quite a few samples. In various locations. And then, when we have covered the field, we can send the, uh, the findings off to the lab. And then they'll get back to us and they'll tell us the situation with our field. So we'll know the nitrogen, the pH, the type of soil that it is. Actually, it won't take too long to do this. It's great. We are treading lightly. We're tiptoeing around the field. Instead of driving a tractor through. Because we're going to be driving a sprayer through as well. We don't want both. We have to go to several locations. to the second to last sample. We've already had the results back from the first field. It cost me four hundred pounds. Um, so yeah, hopefully they're good. <laughs> I think it's always about the same. It's always really bad. Nitrogen and pH have to uh, put your own fertilizer on to boost it. That's what we're going to do. So yeah, so as you can see, nitrogen pretty bad. Um, as soon as we have, actually yeah, come to think of it, because we've missed these little pieces, does that mean it's going to cause an issue? We really do have to cover most of the field. It's okay though, because next time we go in there with the sensor, we'll cover the whole field. This field has been done, fully. So once again, we can send off those samples. And we should have the results very soon. Yeah, so I should have covered more of the other field. I should have done it in a better way. But not to worry. Getting that extra application on is going to make all the difference. When I say extra, I mean first. <laughs> it's the first application. Again, it doesn't matter too much though, because we didn't even pay for the crop. It came with the field. £300 for that analysis. So, into the sprayer and part this up, but I am really happy that we bought the quad bike, and this isn't the only use obviously, we can use it for many other things the sprayer is 
towering over us. I should keep more stuff in here. It's nice. And yeah, we're going to be using that John Deere again soon as well. That's the thing about the winter. There's just not much field work to do. So we should have plenty of liquid fertiliser. More than enough to go around. We'll do these two fields. Alright, so I don't know if I should put crop destruction on. I think I probably should do. Just because it looks better. Or is it too early? It's not grown enough. Well, it should work with the canola. Right, so if we're on automatic application, which we certainly should be, it'll always apply the right amount. If we go over an area which we've already done, it should turn itself off. So this still leaves the mystery fill, which I haven't bought yet. I just don't know which one to go for. I would love to go for that massive one. You know, that huge field. I don't think we can afford it. But soon. Soon we will be able to afford it. When we get to this next corner, we'll take a look at the map and we'll just make sure everything's working. But yes, as I said, I should have covered the entire field. I'm so pleased we have this. It's not actually mine, I don't think. I remember there was an issue with the pricing, so I just paid a lump sum. I need to pay more. Technically, I have it for free. <laughs> That's not the idea. It's applying nicely. It's just we've got these areas. But look at 116. We can cover the whole field. should finish it off but no tram lines I'm not sure the exact reason why um, probably an obvious reason which I'm overlooking yeah so that field should look really good it does nice um, yeah so these two grass fields they're gonna need some more slurry when we've got enough if we don't ever get enough we'll just do one with the sprayer but for now we'll leave them um, so yeah, the big field which I was talking about, 92. Just look at the size of that field. It does have a crop in. It has, oh, <laughs> sugar cane. Well, we could change that. It's We can almost afford it. If I hadn't bought the soil analyzer, we could have afforded it. But yeah, it's not the point. We can just sell something. We have loads of stuff. Um, it's also got an interesting Island, probably a tree. 82, that's also good. The sugar beet, that would take forever. We could afford 82. So which field do you think we should buy? Obviously not field number one, we've already owned that. And maybe we don't want a big field. Maybe the smaller ones are more fun. I think they are, actually. Field number 90, 106. Many to choose from. Oh yeah, we could also sell the forest which is £202,000. So yeah, money is not an issue really. I want to go and see film number three. Desperate scene in film number three. But we're going to take this back and then, yeah, we need to think about feeding the cows. They need... Well, we're going to have to break into our grass bales, our grass silage. 
but that's what they're there for. In fact, that crop, it's only in the middle of spring, I suppose, yeah, you would get the flowers in April, May time. But it looks like it's much more advanced than other fields. I turn that setting back on. You know the realistic beacons where it actually lights up trees and buildings? For some reason it was disabled. I remember enabling it when the game first came out. And then somehow it's disabled itself and I never turned it on again. Until now. Well, until the previous two episodes. Like last week. <laughs> um, okay. I only just noticed when it tipped over but they put the exhaust, the really hot exhaust, right on top of the tank, which you would have thought was plastic, is it? I suppose it does have a heat shield. Well, it must work. I, it's, I just noticed it. I was surprised. Anyway, let's put this over here. I guess that's the thing with sprays, because so much space is taken up by the tank, there's not really much space to put other things. So they have to go on top or underneath. Right, so how are we going to get to for number three? I think we'll fly. Ready? There we go. <laughs> oh, good view of the train. A very good view of the train. There's for number one, which is no longer ours. This field is ours, the alfalfa field which is ready almost to cut and the clover field which I'm looking forward to yeah it looks so realistic just like when you get clover in your lawn I bet the bees would be all over this but that can't be too far off being ready to cut I look forward to doing it um, I just need to remind myself exactly what we need to do with the clover we need to ferment it okay Right, so that's easy enough. We can either bale it or put it into a pit. Although we don't have a pit, we're going to have to get one. Okay, so at least I don't think we have a pit. I haven't seen one. Yeah, so first things first, let's go and get a bucket load of the fermented alfalfa. We actually don't need much. Oh, actually, is that trailer already full of it? It probably is. But we'll top it up. bit of a tight squeeze here. And then we do have the blue bells in there which are fermented grass bells but we already have some on the trailer so we'll use those. And I don't know if we're going to have to get a feed mixer to open those bells up. Maybe we can just put them into the trigger. We probably can do. That should be plenty. Hello trailer. And now we just need to find the trigger. Oh, they're going to need tidying. Yes, actually, I've never used that little automated machine. I think it has a name. Is it called Emily? I'm not too sure. It's been around for some time. I think next time we'll try and get that. I think it essentially just tidies up spilt food. It's taking a bit. There we go. They did actually still have some fermented alfalfa. That's what they were living off. So, yeah, let me just get back into here. Grass fermented. That is the thing we need. And because the grass is growing, we can actually do the fresh grass. Although, they should be grazing that. At some point soon. 
Right, so just around the back here, we have got this trailer. We don't need to move the trailer. We can just take these off. We just need a bail fork. Do I have a bail fork? Yes, I do. So we need the Deutzfahr. Ever since I flew, it seems to have gone laggy. I don't know what I did. So just to guarantee that we're not going to do a huge flip, I'm going to put that weight on the back. But I think it would be a good idea to get a feed mixer, especially if this doesn't work. If it, well, if it doesn't work, then we're going to have to get a feed mixer. But it might work. Now this bell spike has a, a bell capacity of three. So we should be able to lift, well, three, I was going to say, the top two, we just need to be slid across. There we go. And now we can go for the, the top three. It's good. Still feels very stable. These actually have a capacity of 6,000 litres each. So, chance of needing three is uh, very slim. Probably only one. Don't know if we can open them up somehow by hand. Let's just... Oh, it did. I was going to say, let's just see what happens. It took two. We've still got one in the fork, though, so that's probably why it's not taking that one. Maybe it is full. Ah, oh, it is. 16,679 litres. Very good. Okay, well, that actually does conclude the food for today. Eventually, we'll be able to give them hay and other grass products, but... Uh, and fermented clover. Yes, this is where we're going to conclude the video. So, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. As I said, we need to keep in mind fields that we need to buy. But I'm thinking maybe stick with the smaller ones. But if it's between these two, which one do you think? 92 or 87? Let me know. See you again soon. And bye for now.